Your Excellency, thank you so much for joining CNBC. I want to kick off by just getting you to walk me through Oman's role at the COP27. Yeah. Well, we came here uh, pretty much announcing the fact that we have declared 2050 as a net zero date. Uh, that was announced last October uh, by His Majesty. He also announced the establishment of our Man Sustainability Center as a body to monitor the activities that will lead to net zero, mm -hmm. holding the different sectors accountable to the targets that they set from the, for themselves. We have conducted uh, a concentrated three weeks uh, net zero lab to be able to identify where are the emissions coming from, which sector is contributing by how much, identifying the top five sectors that probably contribute 95% of the total emission, agreeing with the different ministries, what plans they have, what support they need, what targets they can set for themselves, uh, what negotiation potential events will happen in the future because we, it's, it's one thing to put a plan yeah, and another, another to, to execute, execute. it. Yeah. And as you execute, we are already anticipating that some will probably fall short of meeting their targets, others will be a little bit advanced. Yeah. We have three paths, there is the accelerated path, there is the slow path for the difficult to abate industries, and there is the moderate one where plans are already in place and you progress as technology develops and funding becomes available and opportunities become sort of meaningful commercially and so on. And between the three, there will ultimately be some sort of give and take and negotiation. The, 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 the ultimate goal is that we all arrive in 2050 at the promise that the country had made for itself, which, is, which is great. To your mind, when we sit here at the COP27 in the midst of an energy crisis, there's no doubt that the world needs more production of oil and gas. How do you square the two? I think the world will need all the energy it can get hold of. I mean, we are still producing coal today. Yeah. And we have been talking about uh, getting rid of coal production for quite some time. Yes. The world needs uh, energy. Uh, if we go forward to 2050, there will be more energy demand and not less. Uh, so it will be foolish of us to assume that the world energy requirement is going to go down and we can meet all the demand with renewable energy and, and so on. Do you think there's a more realistic conversation I think happening we need to here be, now? We need to be a little bit more realistic. But the three categories that I normally put the energy transition at, the first one is affordability. Yes. Energy has to be affordable for every person to get access to. There's no point providing energy that is not affordable. Yeah. Some in the United States would say oil is not affordable right now. Well, there was a maybe, yeah, but uh, uh, there are circumstances that are driving the prices at the moment. Uh, but Saudi-led production you, cuts? Well, the production cut is helping to balance it and, and, and really helping to try avoid a, a, a price spikes probably in the future if we're not careful. We're trying to balance it. Uh, it's nothing to do with the, with the price. Were you surprised by the blowback on that decision in terms of the U.S. response, the Western response? No, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised. I was, it was expected. I mean, I would be surprised if the reaction was anything different, mm -hmm. honestly. And still, though, you think it was worth the move? We, we still believe, and it was the right decision. And looking at the numbers now, we, we believe it was the right decision. Uh, the, 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 the world needs a bit of uh, reflection points, a bit of uh, uh, courageous moves to try and balance it. Uh, uh, there is no point making short-term gains for a long-term pain for everybody. Mm -hmm. We've been doing this since 2016, trying to really play a very difficult act of ba balancing the supply and, the de and demand and so on. It's not an easy task and uh, so far it's been executed quite well with all the pluses and minuses or pros and, and cons and so on. And it will be foolish of us to assume that every decision OPEC plus makes will be accepted by the international community. Some, some, position, some decisions are by nature difficult. Yeah. But getting back again to the, to the uh, energy transition, so affordability, sustainability, which means it needs to be available all the time. Yeah, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. There's no point supplying energy that is only partially available. And it needs to be clean. We know that. 
uh, and therefore as much as you can provide clean energy, whether it's renewable, whether it's nuclear, whether it's geothermal, and we're working on the, at least the renewable and the geothermal. Whether it's oil and gas, but you do it in, a, in the most clean possible way, the world needs all of it. Yeah. And, and therefore, putting it in affordable, sustainable, and clean, I think that's what the world needs. Balancing this is not going to be an easy thing. Yeah. Uh, What's your greatest concern at this point? Because when we look at this from the macro level, we're talking about inflation, recession globally, and frankly, a Chinese growth that is anything but certain. The Chinese growth is impacting the demand, for sure. Yeah. But we know what's driving that. I mean, as soon as China declares COVID free, then the world is going to go back probably to where it was before. And most of the world nations have already either declared COVID free or they're treating this as a normal symptoms they have to live with. It's, it's one of those things that uh, uh, at some point in time you just have to say, I have to live with it. Uh, it happens just like flu, flu happens every, every year. There are seasons for it. And I think at some point in time probably China will come to the same terms like everyone else is. And then, of course, we're back again to hopefully some, some decent growth in the global demand whether it's energy or oil or whatever it is, but the world needs a bit of, of a break from that. Uh, now, in terms of the, the main challenges, it's really the balance between clean mm. and continuous supply of energy. Mm. And uh, there are, of course, these two school of thoughts that needs, at some point in time, they need to get together and decide what does the world need. Mm. Uh, I, I believe it, it needs both. There are no energy CEOs at this conference. Does that surprise you? They were invited to be a part of the conversation. They are around, trust me. Mm. Yes, I'm just, I, they're not I, just coming I, on CNBC. I know them and I see them and I meet with them. Mm. Uh, they're probably not in the main conferences. Mm. They're probably not in the media, uh, mm -hmm. vocal about their, uh, their, their position, but they are around. Yeah. And they are committed. I mean, we're an energy producing nation, yes. but we are also committing to the transition and the change. And we do it just, uh, sen sensibly. I mean, we, we have an obligation to the world. But we also have an obligation to continue supplying energy. Because there are a lot of people who don't have access to the basic energy that you yes. and I are probably enjoying and taking for granted. They don't have access to that. What is your outlook for prices going forward in the sense that a lot of folks that we speak to on CNBC have predicted that with a recession coming, with high inflation, prices could go down. Do you see that happening? I, I see the prices probably staying a little bit at this level until the end of winter, mm -hmm. uh, probably by end of quarter one. Once we realize that winter have come and gone, mm. hopefully with very little uh, impact in terms of uh, access to energy and so on, then the world will realize that it, it, the crisis was not as big as we thought. Yeah. The price will start to come down. In Oman, we are, we are really not banking on these prices to continue to stay high for next year. Mm -hmm. Our current strategy is uh, that the price will probably start to come down sometime next year. Our budget is balanced on $55, uh, which is way lower than Very where it is so. today. Yes. Just to make sure that we are not overinflating the, uh, the, the price hike. Uh, and I think that is a very sensible thing to do. If the price continues to be where it is today, we have other things to worry about, like cost of transportation, cost of yeah. material, and so on. So we're equally Im impacted. Uh, and therefore, it's also in our best interest that the prices come down to a reasonable level, yes. where the consumer and the supplier are both feeling winning. Uh, and you have a sustainable and, and sustainable. situation. Yeah. yeah. What about... Russia, because the G7 is getting closer to what they call the price cap, and they're still determining what that exactly will look like. But in your mind, is that something that's going to be detrimental to the stable, stabilization of the market? I Look, price cap is not a, a, a market thing. It's, it's unheard of. It's a very difficult thing to implement. It's, uh, it, it goes against all the market norms that we used to. Uh, free market is supply and demand. Yes. And to put a price cap, that means you're also accepting potentially a price flow, and no one is talking about price flow. Mm -hmm. And we do that all the time when we negotiate contracts. If you want to put a, a cap on the profitability of the investor, you are willing to give 
some sort of floor protection. And the two have to go hand in hand. No one is talking about floor. But in all cases, price cap is not something the world will be able to sustain for long. And it's very difficult to monitor. And, uh, and I really don't know how the EU is going to, to implement it. So you don't it. imagine this actually having the effect that the West is hoping, at least on Vladimir Putin's bottom line? I, I doubt it will. Uh, but until it's truly implemented and we see the, the impact of it, it will be difficult to say. Your Excellency, thank you for joining CNBC.